Last Monday, we chatted with one of the kings of comedy, Lenny Schultz, here on the show. Here's part two of that interview. You did mention that after that stint with uh, potentially playing minor league baseball or playing with the Yankees, that you got a chance to play against uh, Wilt Chamberlain up in the Catskills when you were when you were a lifeguard, right? A lot of the uh, uh, college kids, to make some money, I went up to the Catskills and uh, we had basketball up there, softball, ping pong, everything. I was on the Harmony basketball team and we played against Kutcher's and Will Chamberlain was there. He was a bellhop at that Kutcher's place. Red Auerbach was his coach in the summer. And I remember our team played, his, our hotel played his hotel. I took a shot and I'll never forget it. He didn't block my, uh, well, didn't block my shot. He caught the ball in the air. It was wild. Yeah, both are definitely wild stories, Lenny. I think it's cool, too. But, you know, that second point I was going to make about the sports references in your career is that actually baseball does come back around and you, you do get a chance to kind of play uh, Major League Baseball in a way. And it's through it's through a show called Ball Four in 1976, which is uh, based on a former Yankee pitcher, Jim Bouton's book of the same name, a great book, one of the great sports books of all time. And in, in that show, you play a character named Lenny the Birdman Siegel. Tell us about, about that sitcom. Well, I was in L.A. They flew me to New York to read for the uh, sitcom, the part, and uh, I did well, and they liked me, so I became one of the uh, regulars on the t uh, show. So I had to move back to New York, and I was the Birdman, who, who, and I was, uh, I was an actor who had a, was a pitcher with a bad arm, and that's what I was in real life. I hurt my arm. So I was uh, always, most of the time, what I would do is they put me in a hot tub and I would be always soaking my arm, you know? And we did it right here in Manhattan. Jim Bouton was a pitcher on the Yankees. He wrote the book. And, uh, but we only lasted about seven, eight weeks. There's a lot of dissension. Something happened on it. It, was, it wasn't good. It, it, they didn't write it good or something happened. But unfortunately, hey, this is my first sitcom. Hey, you never know. That's how you make it in this business. You uh, you you get on a show, and you you got to be lucky if it lasts three, four, five, six, seven years when you get a name. But we only lasted six, seven weeks. Well, it seems like I said that you were destined for other things, and the proximity from the Bronx and the city to be able to play in all these different clubs and something that you end up kind of gravitating towards later in your life, you know, 30 years old and, and kind of changing paths and things like that. What what was the comedy scene like back in those days? Oh, yeah, that was interesting. Like I say, I started at the improv. And in those days, the regulars there were uh, Dangerfield. Wow. This is before he had his nightclub. Dangerfield, Robert Klein, um, Richie Pryor would come in once in a while. Uh Steve Landisberg came after me, a little after me. Uh, David Brenner came a little after me. It was interesting. I'm trying to be a, now a comic. Instead of doing my little shows and shtick for, the, for my friends, here I am on stage, you know? And I'm getting good time. But the only thing is I was teaching school, so whenever I would go, go during the week, uh, they, uh, they would put me on early so I could uh, do my little... 20 minutes or whatever it is, go home, go to sleep, get ready for school. I think there's this tremendous talent that you have for this physical and performative uh, kind of comedy. I was hoping this morning on the show, you might be able to share uh, some of those uh, great characters that you've made famous. I remember, geez, I need, I need material. What am I going to do? I remember being in the mountains as a kid. My pa parents used to take, go to bungalow colonies in hotels, you know, for the summer. And there were chickens around there, you know, and horses and cows. So I started imitating chickens and I, then I became a good impression. I did great chicken voices. So I said, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I, what I did was um, I take Archie Moore, a boxer. You ever hear of him or you're Absolutely. a young guy? Archie Moore, light heavyweight champ. I, I boxed, I, I taped the, the uh, mat when he was boxing. You know, weigh, weighing three pounds, four ounces, weighing 190 pounds. Well, I say, changed the terminology of the uh, boxing into chicken words. Weigh, like weigh, weighing three, two pounds, three ounces with no fat. I made it a chicken thing. And that's what you saw on the Merv Griffin show for the second time. 
and uh, then I and then I became uh, very well known at doing these check-ins. <clears throat> Let me warm up. <laughs> Not bad, right? Huh? Not bad. Still got it. <laughs> then I start doing uh, Irish chicken, Italian, Jewish, French, Greek, Spanish. I just start doing all those chicken things and name and nationality. Of it. I don't know them all, but I know quite a few. Uh, well, let's go Italian since my last name is Italian. Okay, here's an Italian chicken. <laughs> By the way, I worked with Frank Sinatra several times, you know, on Laughing. And uh, uh, here's an Irish chicken. <laughs> Spanish. Jewish. Yeah, wait, here's a chicken lays eggs, right? I'm going to give you four eggs. Four eggs. Not bad, right? Not bad at all, Lenny. Then I, uh, then I worked on Sesame Street for a while, and then a lot of children's shows. Because I was great with kids, and I used to do my little puppets and stuff. And I want, and I, and I, and I want my mommy, and I want a cookie, and I, and I, and I want a toy. I want ice cream. Yeah, I want my grandma. Uh -uh. Here's an iguana. You know iguana, those lizards. Not bad. Very, Here's very good. Champagne. Then it goes down. Uh, so I do a lot of visual, you know, sound effects yeah, stuff. Of course. In my Lenny, in terms of the, uh, the state of comedy, I mean, I think at that time, comedians and actors like yourself were able to, to do these types of, of funny routines that I, I think nowadays so much is, is, is just changed and probably much more in the negative way, uh, whether it's trying to get people to laugh with uh, derogatory things or things like that. You know, to, to be able to have the purity of the comedy and to come up with these classic routines, just, you know, how much better was the comedy back then? I have nothing uh, uh, against being, you know, using four letter words because that when cable came around, everything opened up wild. Uh, we didn't have that in those days. And the only ones who were doing real wild stuff were Lenny Bruce or uh, Richie Pryor. And uh, today, some of these young kids make th th these guys normal you know so um i don't know to me uh i like a lot of comics my favorite one is, and he became one of my uh, closest friends when we did laughing was robin williams he was a real true true genius no one could compete with him i saw him get up uh on stage with richie Pryor, and richie was great you know uh, but he made everyone look you know slow the way to get on tv in my day was to do clean stuff you know carson griffin sullivan stuff uh so i i usually work that way but i could get blue too especially in colleges you know and not as wild as some of the other people i did it more like a crazy guy you know yeah. I, more like a clown crazy type of guy and um I had an interesting life, really, with that show business. I was lucky. Uh, and I did so much of it, I got a nice pension out of it, you know? I belonged to, uh, for many, many years, SAG and AFTRA. Those are my unions. Yeah. And, boy, uh, I had a good time doing it. I, I, I love getting on stage. Uh, right now, as a retired guy down here in Florida, I go to the swimming pool, I do a show. People, I go to a, a, a restaurant, I do a show. I, I, wherever I go, I, I fool around. Well, Lenny, we're, we're so happy that you're still entertaining. And like I said at the top of this interview, you've done a great job in, in taking humor to new heights and, and doing good things for young people. And, and uh, like I said, so great to have you on the show. You are a true legend. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. That's the end, right? That's the end. Take care.